In this video we're going to be tearing down an early noughties specialised hard rock. So here is the bike. I'm not exactly sure of what year it is. It's between 2002 and 2005. I think it's 2003 looking quickly. Anyhow I bought this bike mostly because it's got some nice parts on it. Here we have the Hope Mini Brakes. These were pretty awesome back in the day. Race Face Diablo stem with a sort of laser etched flames which is a bit cheesy but also kind of retro cool. But the bolts here are pretty rusty so they need restoring before we can reuse it. And again, Hope uh, Mini Brakes both sides so they're definitely good for a, uh, a build I got coming up for sure. Uh, race Face Bars so we've got sort of a Race Face finishing kit. Moving down we have a Mazaki Dirt Jumper 3. I used to run these forks. Pretty good, solid weigh a ton but you know you're not going to break them uh, they're coil sprung uh, they're just absolute tanks and reliable um, got some hope break um, brakes hope quick release levers so this bike has been tricked out back in the day quite nicely i think uh, i think these sun ditch rich rims are original hubs faded from black to brown there but that's just kind of a normal thing for us some anodizing processes on different materials um, it's got hope um, disc rotors as well so yeah it's been sort of tricked out so this bike would have come with cable discs so the routing for a hose is a bit awkward so as you can see it's been cable tied to the top tube hope quick release there and looking at the seat post it's a really nice race face diablos one rusty bolts but it's quite some real nice cnc work on there hiding beneath it all got a bit of a rotten specialized saddle it's just torn so that can go in the bin um, no need to keep that from my side Moving down the bike, what do we have down here? We have the boring true tift cranks, which you may have seen on a build. I've already reused these on something. Um, I actually quite like these cranks. If you have them, they're pretty good. Um, solid and reliable. I definitely want to upgrade to a single ring. Got some magnesium pedals on here. I think these are Wellgoes. I remember running these back in the day. They're actually pretty cool. I'm going to service these, reuse them, probably give them a lick of paint. Uh, got some NAF mid uh specialised stickers. Uh, specialised was going for an odd patch in the mid uh, they There were some weird coloured bikes. Uh, someone's upgraded this to a B-twin um, bottle cage at some point in time, which isn't good. Um, I can go in a bin or on a different bill for sure. Moving down, we've got a boring Dior uh, 8 or 9 speed derailleur with a tatty cable. Um, all looking a bit tired down there. Oh yeah, I can see Mega 9 on it. Tired race face, uh, chain stay protector there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing exceptional. Like I think it was done up night in the mid to early noughties and it's sat and someone's done a light refresh in, the, in maybe five to six years ago I'd say looking at the bits. Um, around my era decathlon moved into that area, into our area at that point in time. So that's where the B-Twin would have come in because it's also got um, B-Twin tires as well broken spoke there so that's something that needs to fix and if we need to reuse the rims but like i say i bought this bike mainly for the forks the bar and stem and the brakes um so yeah it's not too bad but i don't see myself rebuilding it at this stage so i'm gonna steal the bits off of it checking the chain see what that wears like and it's yeah the chain che checker is dropping all the way through with considerable play so the chain and the cassette are going to go straight in the bin so they can't be reused and cause damage to any further bikes in the future. This is something I also recommend buying if you're going to be mucking around with secondhand bikes. These park tools are about five to ten pounds and it's just a good way to understand um, a drivetrain and potentially beat someone down on the price if their drivetrain is worn out. So let's get this tear down underway. I always like to start by cutting the cables. There's something like definitive about chopping the cables, meaning you're ripping the bike down. Next, pedals off. Um, I always find the pedals a bit annoying. Sometimes they get stuck in a crank, so it's good to get them off ASAP. Uh, as you can see, um, I, they're pretty decent condition. A light service, some grease in a spray can. And I reckon these would be definitely reusable. And they're incredibly light in their hands. Um, I should imagine they're probably, I don't know, 350 grams for a pair that they're stupidly light compared to most so they're good pedals to reuse those these yeti grips they're not long for the world they're starting to go sticky and i kind of like them but i don't want sticky grips i don't know if there's a way to recover sticky grips or if you could put some chemicals on them to stop them going sticky but i just put them straight in the bin i 
it's not one to research that myself and start spraying chemicals around as you can see there's some sort of aluminium corrosion going on underneath which isn't good i think this bike may have been left outside at one point in time at this point in time i'm realizing the brake hose is too short to slide the brake off the bar so i had to pop off the clamp which you can with these which is no problem removing the shifter now these are stx rc9 speed shifters which are pretty decent we could reuse those on a build for sure they're not like exceptional or like mega gucci but um yeah they're, they're serviceable and usable so we'll have those for a build in the future like i say bought this bike it was on facebook marketplace uh, i think they wanted 120 that for it originally in, in the winter which was a bit too juicy for me i, I man managed to get it for oh, i can't remember if it's 60 or 80 now but like the parts on it were pretty nice and i don't think the owner realized uh, the parts on it to be honest um not that they're particularly expensive but i think if you wanted to buy all these parts um on ebay or something you probably spend more than 60 pounds to get these parts so that's my thinking with this it was to buy the parts and maybe i'll put the frame in the bin eventually or just keep it around for a build or a charity build if i've got enough parts floating around at some point in time and I'll build it up and give it to the charity shop because there's nothing wrong with a bike, I just don't like the style of it. Or maybe I could repaint it, that's another option. I just think it kind of looks boring in that sort of pewtery gunmetal silver. It's not really my cup of tea. Removing the brake calipers here. Um, these Hope um, Minis are pretty good. Um, one thing, these are pre-ISIS mount ones, so you just have the two sort of bolts and you have to put washers between them to shim them out to the right distance. It's a right pain in the butt if you're not used to it. Um, but I've got actually got a bike I want to put these on now. I've recently bought, so I bought the bike uh, two weeks ago from recording of this, uh, <laughs> editing of this video. Um, so yeah, I've got a cool bike in there, sort of the same period, so early 2000s, late late 99, early 2000s. So yeah, I've got a perfect bike to fit those on, and it's going to be cool. Um, that bike's got disc brakes and those disc brakes are an older period interestingly so those older disc brakes potentially could go on an older build as well if we can find one dismount so yeah sort of playing the parts game here and acquiring parts and put them on different builds it's kind of the name of the game here um yep taking the, the shifter off here um these shifters are definitely reusable for sure um they're quite decent nine speed as well rear brake caliper here and again it's one of these um these bolt through ones which isn't isn't great because you have to be careful of the little washers and stuff behind them remember <laughs> remember the washer stack behind the thing one of the risks i got here is uh i might need to find a bunch of shim washers to space out the the caliper on the new bike which is a pain but that is what it is here's me breaking the chain so it can immediately be put in the bin yeah this chain is is not long for the world it's absolutely knackered i've never seen a chain so bad I can only imagine they've run it dry and been riding in the rain to get it so bad. It's just absolutely worn out. I've never seen anything so bad. Uh, removing the rear derailleur here. Um, yeah, this dual rear derailleur is nothing special. I, they're kind of reliable, but then it just doesn't float my boat. It's kind of worn. So again, that could go on a charity bike build in the future. This race face, uh, race face MBUK chainstay protects and go in the bin. It's just too knackered. Let's remove the cranks here and this is like mega tight bolt so I was trying to heave on this for a little bit and I I always get nervous on doing these because I've slammed my hands into the chain rings a few times so um, the, the trick I always do is just tap it with a hammer <laughs> that's not the most elegant way of doing it I should get a dac dac and just pull it out really but yeah a little mallet is, is fine uh, the cranks pulled off the square taper bottom bracket with no problems at all surprisingly I've had a few tight ones recently on some other breakdown builds you'll see coming soon um, yeah like i said i bought a couple of bikes recently and uh, i'm, I'm way, way behind on the videos um so yeah the crank pulled off and i actually reused this crank already if you saw the rock hopper build this is the crank that ended up on the rock hopper build so there we go it's been reused already it can tell you how sort of a backlog down with my videos um non-drive side come off easy peasy no problem at all just use pop the bolts out and use the extractor there's no dramas um like i said yeah we've reused these cha this chains out already uh, i'll link the rock hopper build above right now if you've not seen it it was a bike i built for my niece so it's kind of budget ish um intentions so there's a lot of reusing parts and I'm trying to make something cool for her
onto the front derailleur now. I think this is an SDX RC front derailleur as well, so we can keep this and it can be reused at some point in time. Um, yeah, that came off no problems, and yeah, uh, just put it in my parts bin for reuse at a different time. Uh, popping the wheels out the frame. Remember, these got these nice hope quick releases, so we'll definitely uh, reuse those. This is me just assessing the cones as so the cones felt a little loose, and um, yeah, the, the wheels can be reused, that's for sure. We just need to find a new spoke. Um, popping the stem off now. Um, like I can see, the bolts are pretty crusty. I, I want to reuse this, so I'm going to try, so, uh, try to get hold of some of that Vaporus stuff I've seen other people use. If anybody knows where I can get that from in the UK, let me know because I've not seen it in like Halfords or any of the shops. I need to do a proper online search, but uh, it's like when I had a look, it came up on Amazon, it came up some some really strange third party seller, so I'm not sure if it's like legit or not. So, yeah, if you know where you can get a Vaporus from a reliable source in the UK, let me know in the comments, please. I'd be keen to give it some go. The alternative is white wine vinegar, but it does tend to eat the bolts a bit, so. Not quite sure what to do there, but definitely need to de-rust it. Spacers here are sort of meh, just black normal satin spacers. Fork was really tight in the frame, so it needed a bit of a whack to break the, um, the sort of conical wedge in there. Underneath it all, we've got some really sort of gloopy, muddy, disgusting bearings. So yeah, that headset's not great. So maybe it could be cleaned up and reused, but it's in the parts bin for now. So um, all the parts are still available. Uh, yeah, there's a top here. You can see it's just it's just an amalgamation of water, grease, and mud. It looks like to me. It's not great. So it cleaned up okay, and there's no pitting. Um, bottom bracket came out, with no problems at all, which is a surprise because all the bikes I've had recently have had a right fight with the bottom bracket. It's quite rusty and crusty on the inside, which kind of goes with the condition of the bike. Obviously, the frame's alloy, so it's not rusting itself. But like the there's water got into the frame or condensation, but the bottom bracket feels fine and smooth, so it just needs cleaning up and, and de-rusting. Onto the non-drive side, and this has a plastic cup in this side. But look how yellow it's gone. So I I don't know. Usually I remember these being grey, but this isn't. This one was like a white, and it's I don't know if it's UV exposure, but it's gone like a yellow colour inside the frame. You can see it's kind of crusty in there, but it's it's like I say, it's not from rust. But it's from rust, but the frame's not rusting, if that makes sense. Just gunks got caught in there. So remove this B-twin bottle cage. Um, it can be reused on something, I just don't know what. It's not really my flavour at the moment. quite like this race face Diabolos uh, seat post here. It's got like a really super chunky um, seat clamp. Um, but like the stem, the bolts have gone rusty. So I'm guessing these are bright zinc plated bolts and they've just... Like it's been left exposed, this bike, I think, in a, in a moist garage, I would have thought, or maybe in a shed where it's, it's not fully fully waterproof and it's just got like corrosion and dirt on it and it's just affected it, everything. So, not not the best condition, but like it's rescuable and that's kind of a cool seat post, I think, for a, a sort of a retro build in the future, a period build, a 2000s build. So, yeah, it all looks pretty good with everything off. Let's get the seat post out of the frame. It, did you notice there's some like subtle flame markings on that seat post as well? I think that's kind of cool. Um, that seat post was expensive back in the day because it's all CNC'd as well. So someone put some time and money into this bike for sure. And the last thing we've got to do is remove this Hope uh, seat clamp, which yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be perfect for another build in the future. But I just don't love this. It's, hard rock frame I'm afraid it's kind of look it looks really dated like maybe a paint job and it could look cool but anyhow that's about it for this video the bike stripped down these parts are going on something uh, made in America let's put it that way um, yeah so I got another cool build coming up soon um, so I'll see you in that one actually I've got another couple of breakdowns coming so I'll see you in those videos hopefully they'll follow up this one pretty fast I'll try to get out on a weekend for the next couple of weeks and yeah, thanks for watching if you got this far. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.